there. I thought I would make a video describing uh, an experiment I wanted to undertake where I made a bladeless uh, Victorinox multi-tool modification. Uh, originally, I just thought I would take the Explorer and uh, remove the blade layer. I knew when I did this, I would want um, an inline Phillips. So anything I did was gonna have to include that. And um, then I decided, well, while I'm at it, why don't I also get the Tinker Deluxe and add um, the plier layer. Uh, the Tinker Deluxe I got on eBay for about 35 bucks. The Explorer, uh, I believe 28 bucks, including tax and shipping. And then I found uh, these plus scales from a guy on Etsy that was 25 bucks. So all in it was about 90 bucks for this. I'm not sure that's worth it per se. Um, as a tool, but it's worth it for the fun, um, quote unquote, fun experience. I'm not sure it was actually fun. The intrigue of undertaking the project. I had done a little short video before this on kind of making a modified jet setter by simply taking a midnight manager um, and making a butter knife out of that blade so that you could have a jet setter with um, a flathead screwdriver and a file. I ended up snipping that off before taking a domestic uh, flight and just removing the blade altogether because um, I got nervous. I didn't want them to take it and that little butter knife situation was um, kind of useless anyway. And so I just, uh, it still has like a little scraper aspect on it. So that's cool. And I did use it about uh, three times on a one week trip. Came in very handy. So, but that's a little tool. I wanted something a little bigger, a little more substantial. It could take on a little more potentially. And so this is what I came up with. You, uh, um, really, the main thing was just to remove the blade layer. And what I learned is you can't really mix and match because the spine or backbone for each tool layer is very particular to those tools um, in terms of width, in terms of kind of the uh, line or ergonomics of it, and then therefore how the tools lay down on that spine. So you can't muck around too much there. Uh, but yeah, so I have the scissors and then I have my, whoops, sorry, bonk the camera there. I have the inline Phillips, a magnifying glass, which <laughs> I hate to admit is becoming more useful now that I'm squarely in my mid forties. Um, <laughs> my eagle eyes all of a sudden took an <laughs> an eagle dive <laughs> just in a year or two. Um, the pliers, which, man, honestly, I didn't need to add these. They're essentially useless. I mean, I could bend wire with it, um, crimp, I suppose, you know, pick up hot things uh, like Felix Immler um, definitely showed in his video of ways to find uses for this. But unless it's the smallest nut, you're not going to turn any nut with it. And so I just don't find it that useful. Um, but I thought if I'm making a tool without a knife, it darn well better have some other options in it. And then on this layer, I've got, of course, the can opener with a little mini flat head and um, larger flat head with the wire stripper and the bottle cap lifter. Now on this side, uh, the owl belongs here, but that's basically a blade as far as the TSA would be concerned. So. I removed that and like I was talking about with spines and even the um, dividers, the aluminum dividers in here, you can see this one kind of arches up there. It just isn't meant to fit here. You can kind of see it's more the shape of the owl. But I wanted a little eyeglass um, screwdriver. Also this was inspired by a trip to Paris coming up in a couple weeks. And you know, maybe I need a corked bottle of wine or something. Paris is an entirely blade, non-permissive environment. In reality, I don't even know that I'm gonna bring this. It's a lot to carry. Um, I would probably just go with my little modified midnight manager and not risk losing this. Uh, but you know, it was fun anyway. Uh, what else can I say? Oh yeah, of course, I can't actually move this out properly unless I put the scissors away, but the hook. Um, and then of course the plus scales. So you've got a pen here. <laughs> Go 
try to get my thumb the other way. Pen, of course your toothpick, your tweezers, and back in here you have the little um, pin. I'll show you a picture here. Um, one thing I had to do, oops, was, let me put all this away before I get into that next comment, but you can see the little notches are here, but I ended up just dremeling some notches, um, not too tidily, but I don't care, this is a Franken tool uh, here because originally I had made Franken Tool version 1.0. Um, <laughs> actually, everything laid down even better in that knife. It was seemed really solid, but um, oh, this came over here. But weirdly, uh, I, it was sort of, uh, I, everything worked fine, but it, the scales were inverted so the, the little push holes, you know, the rivets didn't line up with the rivets of the plastic scales. And so I couldn't use the plastic scales, it was sort of inside out. And in order to fix that, I had to take the whole thing apart, which was very swear word uh, worthy and put it back together. But then I found with how things went, the notches weren't where they needed to be. They would be buried back here and you wouldn't be able to access it. So again, not a perfect tool, but a kind of fun experience. Um, maybe I'll make another video kind of commenting on how I put it all together. Uh, this doesn't lie down perfectly. Um, it did with Franken Tool version 1.0, but it kind of bumps into the Phillips right here. You can see at the pivot point there, it still pushes in fine. Um, this doesn't really snap in and out but it's very solid and works just fine. But everything else kind of snaps in and out the way you would want it to, so that's good. Uh, I will say what I needed for this was, this was for popping off scales. Um, if it's very stubborn, you might want to just put it in real hot water to kind of expand things and then try to pop it off if you're going to use the scales again anyway. So that's what that was for. Um, then once you're in there, a center punch um, to kind of give your drill a guided start when trying to drill or core out the rivet. And then drill and core out the rivet. And then once you've removed enough of that brass rod meat, you can go ahead and try to punch it through. Weirdly, on the first knife I disassembled, OMG, I was using this and like bending the tip on this like, ah, trying to murder the thing. And I totally cored it out, but it just wouldn't budge. Next knife, I didn't need this <laughs> ridiculous thing that's meant to make everything go wrong. Um, but I did have a use for it later. Um, so those tools. And then um, one of the rivets under here doesn't, or sorry, one of the brass rods doesn't have a rivet. It's just sort of peened over the scale. I just used a file to um, kind of get the um, sort of mushroom cap off, peened end off, and um, then push it through. I was able to retain all of the rivets from my donor um, Victorinox tools, but I ordered for like eight bucks um, extras because I knew I was gonna be mad if um, I screwed up and then just got, you know, stuck. And then these rods, I think they were approximately together, the 2.2 um, 2 millimeter rods for the center rivets and then the 2.5 for the um, distal rivets um, together were maybe 20 bucks on Amazon. So I had those. Um, and then like a little peening hammer for once you've um, put the new rods through, tap, 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 to cut the length of rods, little snipper. Keep the scissors closed while you're working. Um, used a Dremel occasionally, so that's nice to, to have. Like for example, if you've um, got too much um, brass rod after peening and it's just kind of too rounded out for these plastic scales to set, you might kind of file it down more quickly with that. Um, I used, well, first, these are really soft wood. That's why this looks so <laughs> beat. Um, 
without seating the knife in this, I can't imagine undertaking this with a sliding all over the table. So just simple to do. I just used chisels and just horked out a space and then, you know, the rivet and the pin can just fall out the bottom. Um, I will put a link where um, a fella uh, made a whole accounting of how he undertook his project. It's much better than anything I'm describing here. And it's what I used as my um, starting point. Um, but he mentioned it's good if you can to uh, punch out those pins, um, rods, brass rods gradually uh, so that you can disassemble it gradually. Otherwise they're all just gonna go sproying everywhere and it can be a lot to keep track of what goes where. Then I would put the brass rods in here and then relay my layers. Um, <laughs> experiments. Anyway, uh, I think maybe if I kept doing this, I would get better and better and it would make me less and less crazy. One thing that had me swearing a storm, thank goodness nobody was home other than me. Um, any experienced people who are watching this can speak to this. It's really easy for me to lay the layers and um, kind of get everything lined up properly tensioned for all of the tools except for the scissors. I was struggling so hard. My muscles are sore today from struggling with that yesterday. I can't even explain how difficult it was to get everything to line up um, properly tensioned. They would just all kind of pop out of place. So if anybody can let me know, I would appreciate it. Yeah, I'm just doing this on one take. So hopefully that wasn't too, too rambling. Um, let me know if you have questions. Um, or if anybody's interested in me ever making a video or I actually go through things step by step. All right, cheers.